Hello guys and welcome to Marcel Entertainment. Today I'm going to show you a brand new kingdom that I have made allies with and this one is called the Snow Kingdom and it's in connection with my Desert Kingdom and I actually created a nether portal hub and that one is actually connected with both kingdoms and it's basically a portal through hell you could call it because the nether is based off real life health sort of right and yeah it's like pretty interesting and I'll actually show you later that uh, portal connection that I built and first of all I want to show you the building that I'm most proud of and this is this sort of botanic garden here this winter garden full of bees I've actually added a lot of bees to there so I can get a lot of crops and oh man I have now five beehives here and stuff just keeps growing crazy fast like the bees, they're doing such a nice job to keep this stuff from growing. And aren't they sort of cute, especially if, the, if they have those pollen around? Oh, wow. They're so friendly. They don't even attack me. I got some carrots. I can actually trade those so easily now. Let's get some more potatoes. I want those potatoes. Like, I feel like ever since I um, started using bees, I have like a farming efficiency that has been like doubled or even tripled. Like, just look at that. They're flying around everywhere looking for some flowers. And each time they fly over stuff, like once they have the pollen, wait, let's wait. They should get the pollen soon. And once they fly over stuff with the pollen, it just keeps growing way faster. Yep. This one has it now. Now look, you see that? Just like bone meal, right? It's so great. It just, it just helps so much. Like it's so great to use bees for endgame. I advise everyone to get bees into their home. Like they are so freaking useful. Like just look at that. Like If they fly over stuff, like here I, I grew those around the same time. This is already half done. The next bee that goes over that will make it uh, fully grown. Isn't that beautiful? And you can make a lot of cash as well. Like a lot of emeralds. Oh yeah, here we go. Nice. I already got 25 emeralds and... That was just yesterday. I actually made just in one day that much. And I only played like for like how long? Like one and a half hour or two? Oh, and in the snowy tundra guide that I told you about, I talked about how to grow those uh, giant spruce trees, those giant spruce trees. And now I, I wanted to show you the tree, how it has fully grown here. And yeah, like I said, like where you put those four saplings there, you need to have like a, a, a whiteness of at least like six blocks, right? The torch like uh, doesn't count, so it doesn't matter. Like, you only need like one block next to the torches, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and that's that's how you can actually save the most space and grow those uh, giant spruce trees. So, wherever you put those uh, spruce saplings, move two blocks from it and put uh, a torch there. Keep uh, one block as open space so you have at least like four uh, blocks for it to grow. Because it needs four, four. And yeah, that torch helps you to keep the snow away because somehow that snow counts as a block or something. That's why they didn't keep uh, growing f earlier. So once I started adding those torches, they just started growing. So yeah, it's quite challenging to build in the snowy tundra, but it's a really, really nice and wide area. And probably here I will put the, either the library or the cartographer. Oh yeah, and I want to show you guys my... A new smithing building. What is he actually selling? Oh, sharpness one. If this was like sharpness two or three, I wouldn't mind. So yeah. Welcome to my smithing building. And one thing is really cool about that. Yeah, like I've added some lava in here, the, the grindstone. And... There's something really, really important and a little trick that I must uh, show you guys. 
Like, if you use lava in a building that's uh, part of wood, you need to make sure that uh, the, the lava that uh, keeps flying around... Like, I think it's three blocks, if I'm not mistaken. Either it's two or three blocks. So, if you have lava there and you have one stone block there and one wood block, the wood block will catch fire. However, if you have, like, two stone, stone blocks in between those, at least, it won't jump. Or if it's covered by at least one stone block, like here. So if, like, let's say you put there just one block and there's like a wall, then make sure it can't fly over, right? So you put one block on top. Like, I, at, at the beginning I had their iron fence and somehow this actually caught fire because on top there was no block. So I started adding like those blocks on top so it can't fly out. And what's really, really cool about it is this actually looks like this is the, 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 the thing where you actually put the coal in and power this whole furnace system there, right? Those are just regular furnaces and that's the blast furnace right there. And that is at the bottom of the side there. It looks like this whole thing is powered by that. It's almost like the, the armorer or the, the, the weaponsmith is going there putting some coal in and this just keeps the lava alive and the energy for that. It's so freaking cool. Yeah, I took actually a heavy inspiration by the naturally generated uh, snowy villages with putting a carpet on top instead of a trapdoor. <laughs> like that looks actually pretty nice. Like oh wow. And upstairs is the storage room. I still need some decorations there. And yeah, unfortunately because the furnace is there I had to cover this. Otherwise it would look weird because you will see the garbage store, I didn't want that. And why did I use actually a trapdoor? I'm about to explain to you guys why. Like if you if you go all the way down there and by accident you push a villager to the to the to the ladder. And let's see, maybe I can accomplish this here. Why are they stuck at the door though? Like, oh, can't even. They are glitched or something. I can't even push them. Like, they're not even moving an inch. Like, what the heck? Uh, guess I can show it in this video. Okay, but I'll just explain it. If you have like a, a villager nearby and you somehow bump into him or he keeps touching the ladder, or another villager bumps into the villager. They're actually getting pushed up and they automatic, automatically go up there for some reason. I have no idea why if they reach the first ladder they just go up automatically, but they do. And I actually sort of like lost the villager because one villager went up there and he never came back down. And for some reason he just disappeared. And what I believe is because I didn't have those torches, a monster spawned in here and then killed the, the, the first uh, weaponsmith. Because he just suddenly disappeared. And yeah, it just keeps growing here. More and more villagers and... This is an unfinished building. But here will be my sort of uh, church or temple. And I actually think it looks pretty cool with those stone pillars there. Yeah, I will probably put some stairs, maybe some carpet around here. Like I want this to look like an actual church or something or some sort of temple. And yeah, those torches, maybe I'll actually change those to lanterns. They're all facing to the inside here where that brewing stand is. But it's unfinished. What I'm also proud of is... Oh wow, I have a baby villager finally. Like a kid villager. They make such funny sounds like... I love the sounds they make. It's so high pitched. And yeah, that's my shepherd's house with two shepherds. And oh wow. And we got some blue sheep. Like, that's super unrealistic, right? But I really want some blue beds and blue carpet because it also fits that thing. I might also get some red, sharps, uh, red sheep. Did I say sharks? I mean sheep. It's beautiful. A lot of blue carpet possible and beds. When I started adding, even though it looks unrealistic, but I saw this in Austria, I started adding those 
dirt blocks with trapdoors around with like flowers. I've also added it at the, the smithing house. Yeah, that's also one with yellow flowers. And I started adding some smoke there by putting a campfire under a stone and fence block. A cobblestone fence block. And now every couple of seconds a little bit of smoke will come. It isn't much, but a little is coming. Yeah, after sleeping I will show you the the gates. Uh, let me quickly show you how fast stuff regrows. Do you remember how I was getting like some potatoes over there? In those few minutes, stuff already regrew a lot. Like especially here. The only issue there is with the bee farm is they have like irregular paths somehow unless you put the flowers at one spot. But because I have such a huge area, what I should do is add two more hives, remove those flowers and put them all the way back there. That would probably be better. But I also care about look, so that's why I did it like that. And oh, I have a new pet, I need to show you that as well. I tapped this wolf there, now I have a little dog. What should I name him though? What should I name this dog though? Maybe I name him Johnny or something, like I don't know. Or Spencer. Can I actually uh, take a dog through the nether? I think I can, right? Like I saw videos. PewDiePie did that. So yeah, hey buddy, let me introduce you to the Desert Kingdom and let me show you guys that portal through hell that leads to the Desert Kingdom. Like let's leave this beautiful snowy tundra and let's go through hell to reach the Desert Kingdom. <laughs> One thing is actually cool about the uh, nether portals, like if they are on the overland, like overworld, like they can actually also sometimes spawn a zombie uh, pigmen here, right? Do I have anything useful here? Or just nether rack. And yeah, what happened here? And let me show you how far it actually is, like right? wait. Oh, here it is. Wait! Where's my dog? Where did my dog go? Come with me. Why is the dog not following me? Do I need a lead for that? Okay, I will just walk there and hope he spawns. If he doesn't, I will get a lead. And it freaking doesn't work. Okay, I will need a lead, I guess. Let's just grab a lead. Good dog. It's weird how they're teleporting around. It's almost like they're sliding over the ground like... Oh yeah! I forgot to show you guys. I also have now some... Some llamas. Huh? Oh, I accidentally... Hold on. One good thing is they don't spit on tape dogs. I need to figure out where I put the lead. I think it was in this house. Yep. But I only need one. In case something happens to me. Where is that dog?
There you are. Oh, come. I really hope this works with a lead leg. I have no idea how people actually get those dogs into the nether, but I do hope it works because I can't leave him there because, like, I don't know. What happens actually to... Wait! Where the f... Where's my lead? It's so easy to break those. The issue about the lead is you don't see it in your inventory, so you don't know if it actually fell off or not. Like I wish they would actually somehow still keep uh, the the lead in the inventory. Maybe it changes its symbol or something, so you know it's still connected. Because you always need to turn around and look: is the lead still there? Are you ready for the journey through hell, <laughs> through the Nether? I mean. This one actually work. Seriously? So you can't bring dogs anymore th uh, through the nether. Oh. Wait. Wait. Where's my dog? What the heck? Oh, it worked. Come here. No, you're on the right side. You need to go this way. What's happening here? So buggy. It's so buggy, I would just uh, put the dog back, like he can come. I have no idea why it doesn't work. But we're not going all the way back, you wait in this house. Come here. You wait here for me. Good boy. Yeah, unfortunately I had to put the dog back. It was somehow bugged out. Like, first of all, he didn't go through the portal when I did, even though I put him with a lead. And when he was once in the nether, like the lead was gone. And when I tried to pull him, even though he didn't go through the portal, he teleported back. Like, I don't know, something's buggy right there. Or maybe there's another trick to move the dog through the nether. Because I've seen people bring their dog to the nether, but it somehow doesn't work. Alright. Let's sprint that. Like, those sounds are creepy. They come from gas, but I don't see any gas. They're just flying around somewhere. And yeah, it's a crazy long distance to the Desert Kingdom. And maybe I should put there some tracks and some, some train. But I don't need endless uh, iron for those tracks, right? That's a really, really long distance. Oh, wow. now you guys can see how far this is. Like, that's why I had to make another portal 
Like I kept walking for days there and, and what do I have here? Or just that. Like usually it takes about if you sprint most of the way it takes two full day times to reach the desert kingdom if you're going from the snow kingdom there or the other way around. So it's a pretty long distance. However, now we arrived. Alright, finally. Let me guess it's night over there. Oh, it's not? Oh yeah, the time works differently, right? So it's like two or three times faster there, or how much? I have to Google that, but... From what I've heard, in the nether the time is uh, different than in the overworld, so... If you leave just for like a couple of seconds and you go to the nether, it can already be the evening if you come back. What's happening here? Holy poly! Why are there still so many... Wait! It looks weird. He has those boots. Like, what the heck? Get ignited. I'm not gonna kill the other one. I want that XP though. Give me that XP. Never mind, you have to die too anyway. You freaking gave me hunger, idiot. How long does it actually last? That's my first time that uh, a husk actually hit me. Never got hit by those before. I was careless. All right, here we are, back to the Desert Kingdom. And isn't it so beautiful at night? And just look at all those iron golems over there, how they are gathering there. Here's maximum security. Like, it's a pretty safe place right there, like, for real. I wish I could somehow bring the pets to the nether. Does any one of you know what, what failed there? Like, why it didn't work to put the dog uh, into the nether with the lead and then... Transport it that way. This is so annoying. Oh yeah, I still need to patch this up here. And guess what? You thought I only have four llamas? I have more llamas. Here I also have now some llamas of a different color variation. Wait, I need to tame those again? What can I drop? Let's just drop this for now. That's so annoying, so I need to always retape those. Does it finally work? Finally it worked! And now I need a carpet. Let's try... Let's try blue. What does that one actually look like? Blue carpet looks... Looks freaking cool, I think. Oh wow, that actually does look nice. Oh, oh dude, that's like beautiful. Oh wow. Well done. Nice. So I also would need to attempt this one, but I'll do it later. And I might actually like... Like the red one more for the desert. Because this is like a pharaoh-like feeling, right? You see that on the sides? Like, this is almost like... Like those Sphinx uh, statues have, right? Like those Sphinx in Egypt. Like <laughs> with that around, that's hanging down there. They guess it a more desert feeling, like red is fitting more. This one would look good more in the plains, I would say. But oh, just look at that neck. It almost looks like that. That llama has a necklace or something. Like that's pretty, pretty cool. Like, oh wow. But yeah, like... 
Is there space for some buildings there? I need to patch this up and get there some... Oh, well, I'm still missing those cuts and stone there. I'll probably use stairs though. But yeah, that's it for today's episode. I <laughs> think, like, wow, I have so much still to do as you guys can see. There's still so much empty space for so many more buildings and it's all going so far. And yeah, I wish you guys a good day. Stay all safe and healthy. See you guys next time.